with the world's third largest economy on the dark web, a new report sheds some light on the cost of data breaches. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Wendy Whitmore, Global Lead for X-Force, Incident Response and Intelligence Services at IBM. Welcome, Wendy. Thanks, Tanya. Happy to be here. So what does IBM's X-Force IRS team do exactly? So the IRIS team is the external team that represents our clients. And when you think about what incident response is, it's really people who are responding to breaches. And a lot of times that means we're jumping on airplanes, we are responding to a client site where there's an emergency. And then the intelligence services or the IS side of IRIS are really a team of data analysts and researchers that are more in the back end and that work very closely with that incident response team to kind of feed them the latest analytics on you know, where the threats are coming from, which organizations are responsible for attacking our clients, and then how we kind of marry those two pieces of data together so that we can more efficiently and effectively solve these crimes. Working with the uh, Poneman Institute, you just released the 2019 edition of IBM's Security Cost of Data Breach Report. In Doing the research for the report, what industries did you look at and how many organizations were included? Yeah, great question, Tanya. So when we look at the overall breach statistics, right, when it comes to the cost of a data breach, um, across all organizations we surveyed and across all geographies, uh, the average cost is about $3.92 million U.S. dollars. Of that, we, re we um, surveyed um, a wide variety of industries. We surveyed um, well over 50 countries. So we've got really data that's coming in from a wide variety and a subset. And what we see that's consistent is that um, costs continue to increase. So they've increased actually 12% over the last five years. And that time is money. That's a statistic that I don't think we can kind of emphasize enough, right? When it comes to time, the sooner that an organization can identify um, an attack within their environment, the sooner they can identify and remediate it and contain it, then the less money that that's ultimately going to cost them. In what industries are breaches most expensive? So right now, most, um, most expensive breach industry is still healthcare. The reason that that is, is because the data that is typically taken in those environments is really rich. So the cost to kind of deal with the regulatory um, effects from that becomes pretty significant. And when I say that content is rich, what I mean is a healthcare record doesn't just contain an address of a person and you know, their location and a credit card number, for example, like financial services data might include, but it includes actually a lot oftentimes their history on, you know, if I had knee surgery last year, that's a pretty important piece of information. And a lot of my healthcare industry married with a lot of that data, like um, you know, HIPAA obviously information, which would include your personal identifiable information. So those records then tend to be more costly for, um, for healthcare organizations to replace. And you know, one thing that also I think it's important to talk about is that regardless of industry, you know, I meet with the organizations all the time and their executives and their leaders will say, well, no one would be interested in taking my data. You know, it's not interesting, it's not useful. The reality is that we are in a data-driven economy right now. And we look at the dark web and it's the third largest economy in the world. It's coming in at $6 trillion per year. And that means attackers are looking at your organization as how can I take information that I can then resell somewhere else, ultimately on the dark web and make money. So it's really, it becomes very important then to look at, well, how can my data be monetized versus just looking at it as maybe it's not that interesting to me because I deal with it every day, for example. The report breaks down both cost amplifiers and cost mitigators. What do companies do that makes things worse? And what can they do that reduces some of the pain? So I think in terms of what they do that makes things worse, it relates to time, right? So anything an organization does that increases their time to respond or contain will make things worse. And oftentimes that's things like just not actually making a decision, right? Maybe you identify something, an employee reports something, but you know, executives or some of the leadership team may kind of not be exactly sure what to do with it. And when we do that, oftentimes the attacker is simply buying more time in your environment, right? And when they do that, they're getting more access, that becomes more costly. So things that organizations can do to really effectively reduce costs 
would um, have some detection technologies in place. So specifically, when we get into kind of helping our clients and say, how can we fix this? We want them to have visibility to an attacker's actions on a host. So usually that's some sort of endpoint detection tool that they can identify what commands are being run, um, who, who is doing them in terms of which accounts are responsible for them, and then use that to then do some analysis of what's actually supposed to be occurring so we can identify malicious behavior. Some other things that they can do would be having access to an incident response team. That's actually the number one cost reduction factor. So it doesn't mean, especially if you're a small business, doesn't mean that you have to do the response yourself, but it means that you need to have access to maybe an external party that's going to help you with that. That is going to translate to less time spent, um, less time to contain, and ultimately more money saved. You mentioned that time is money, and you're talking about time being one of the biggest issues. The report mentioned the time to identify and contain a breach was over nine months. Are there are, there, are those the reasons that technical or, or management, are they policy related? Um, yeah, great question. So a lot of times that, that, that lag time into the detection really re relates to what visibility do we have into the Texas. So that's a combination oftentimes of the technical capability and then certainly the skills shortage, right? We're predicted to by 2021 to have 2 million jobs that are not filled in this industry. So that's a huge amount, right? The reality is that most organizations, even if you're huge and you have an unlimited budget, they just don't have enough skilled people with the right technologies and visibility into the environment to detect these attacks fast enough. On the plus side, I do think the industry as a whole has gotten better at um, one, creating talent, um, creating programs to, to train personnel, much more of them at um, high school levels, at college levels, and then also at building technologies that are really effective. But it, it's really that combination of having the right people, the right technologies, married with the right visibility into an environment to be able to detect quickly. And many organizations still struggle with that. For the first time this year, the report also examined the long tail financial impact of a data breach. What did you find there? Yeah, I was really excited actually to see this cost actually being quantified. This is the first year that any organization has done that, right? So we have teams of people who are responding on site today. And one of the questions we get over and over again is, um, you know, how long is this going to take? How much is this going to cost? And a lot of times organizations will look at that as this one point in time, right? I'm going to spend $1 million today and for the next month, and then we're done. But the reality is that only 67% of costs are incurred in the first year, with 22% and 11% being spent in years two and three. And I actually think we're going to see that change even more so with these massive regulatory fines, right? We've seen recently organizations hit with anywhere between 200,000 US dollars, uh, excuse me, 200 million US dollars up to 5 billion US dollars for fines after the fact of breaches. And the reality is it's going to continue to occur. Tell us about the data breach calculator on the IBM security website. Yeah, the data breach calculator is actually really cool. So as an organization, you can go in and kind of start inputting your factors, right? So the industry that you're in, the type of organization you have, and then the investments you've made. So if you've done things like you have an incident response team, you have a, a, a CISO, for example, um, you have encryption on your data, all these different factors, you can look at what the average cost is in your industry versus others. And then for your specific organization, start looking into, okay, well, if I make these investments, here's the cost reduction in the average cost overall. And it's really something that it's a cool graphical tool, but it's also really cool to, um, I, I think, to use as kind of a, to talk to your executives, right, and start actually leveraging some of these quantifiable numbers towards actual reduction in cost. Wendy Whitmore, Global Lead for X-Force Iris at IBM. If somebody wants to connect with you, Wendy, what's the best way they can do that? Do that? I'm, I'm very easy to find over LinkedIn. It'd be fantastic. I would love to connect with people. And then also over Twitter. So you can find me both with Wendy at, at both locations just by looking for Wendy Whitmore. Sounds good. Thanks again for shedding some light on the report. And if you guys want to connect with me, you can. You can do that right here. Find more of my interviews and uh, or you can go to tonyahall.net. Thanks for watching.